Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to uh, Amanda Goes Back to Basics. I certainly did go back to basics. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Uh, I hope you have a chance to pop back and have a look at some of my old videos. Uh, I do talk about my journey to Islam. It was rather epic. Uh, today I want to talk a kind of, um, sort of like a general really. What are the, some of the what are some of the main principles um, and practices that I kind of picked up on and what kind and, and these these were like the foundations if you like it wasn't even as if I had planned it Allah plans Allah is the planner and he's the best planner because the uh, principles that started to filter down into my heart and soul the main principles of Islam um, were a perfect foundation as to where I could start to grow and understand the Dean. Um, so if that sounds great, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Go and get that kettle, hit it and make a cup of tea and come back and we'll have another little natter. <laughs> natter, by the way, uh, means chat, <laughs> in case you didn't know. Uh, I've got a sister uh, from, um, I think she was from Egypt. She asked me, what does Nata mean? <laughs> she didn't quite get it. So for all you British out there, get the kettle on and let's have a Nata. Uh, I learned from a very, very early start to um, my, in, within my journey within Islam was to let go. And I kept listening and hearing this kind of, um, these, these principles, these words, let go, submit, let go, submit, you know, Allah's got this. And I was just, oh, I don't understand. I want to, because obviously it sounds, you know, the perfect remedy, if you like, when you're all stressed out and distressed and upset and you can't see through the fog of your tears and the disaster around you. But if you can just learn to breathe and then let go, and just say it's okay because Allah knows what he's doing we don't know so I learned that and I learned that the more you let go the kind of the higher you rise in your in your contentment if you like and in your peace and I learned to establish myself in this kind of state of um, peacefulness and contentment I learned that I had to take the Dean more than the dunya I had to let the Dean come in to my heart and let the dunya of this life go um, that was one way of, of, of trying to really practice the principle of submit and, it, and and let go and another and another sort of way to help myself let go was to continually uh, remember Allah for a continuous remembrance of Allah and obviously that would be through zikr um, and um, I remember Allah obviously when I'm waking I say the uh, the dua and the dua is when I go to sleep the dua is when I um, enter the bathroom when I leave the bathroom the dua is when I'm making my uh, wudu uh, and general zikr throughout the day uh, bismillah when we're eating just as we start to eat um, and just generally when I'm when I'm I mean I'm I'm home alone so I do a lot of talking to Allah which is great for me it's a beautiful comfort so throughout the day I'm always having a natter <laughs> remembering our wonderful creator um, another very very good point I learned was to put my hopes in Allah and not in people I think I've mentioned this quite a few times not to rely on a human um, for anything Allah's got his hands on our life. He made us. He knows what's best for us. He will show you different ways for uh, providing for you, if you like, for providing your, your good health, your food, your, you know, all terms of nourishment, in your love, in your peacefulness, um, attached to him, to Allah, and not attached to a human. And that goes for many of us women who are very delicate and beautiful little flowers that we are. And we're also very, very vulnerable in our emotions. And we're very quick to uh, to kind of open up, if you like, and let our emotions 
attach to a man. I know I was. I, I guess I could be being a bit general here, so do forgive me, ladies, if you feel, sisters, if you feel that I've, um, if I'm underestimating a woman and saying that she's very emotional, but generally we are. And, um, and we tend to hook into a man or hook into, um, I don't know, shopping as a, as a way of um, s sort of fulfilling our soul and fulfilling our contentment. We might hook into sport, we might hook into anything, anything dunya, you need to let that go, not to get too attached to anything here. Attach yourself to Allah, and once you've fixed yourself to Allah, you can fix yourself, and then you're ready for relationships uh, with, within a marriage, um, friendships, you know, you're ready for anything. You can, you can face the world, you know. So hold on to Allah's rope that he's given us, and never let go, and, Always remember Allah because this will keep fulfilling your contentment, your understanding. This will keep filling your dunya. Um, yeah, so that leads quite nicely into um, finding true love. I didn't find true love until I could really find my own love for myself. And it was through all of what I've just said, remembering Allah much, letting go, knowing that Allah's in control of everything. So learn to love yourself first before you enter any relationships. Um, and that, like I said, and how to do that would be through, through the remembrance um, and so on. I learned that we do not deserve anything. We're, we're, we're just uh, very insignificant and um, very ungrateful, if you like, of the greatness of Allah. Um, but Allah is so merciful. He is El Rahman, El Rahim, and He will give you His mercy. So that is like very powerful. That was very powerful for me to understand. That um, when you've got low self esteem and low confidence, and you're in a very dark place, you don't feel worthy, you don't feel that you deserve anything. But Allah gives you the mercy. So even though we don't really deserve anything because we are Allah's creation, Allah still gives us that mercy and that hope. SubhanAllah. And then everything that you're wanting and that you're praying for and that you're hoping for, if it's right for you, Allah's going to let that happen. And he will let that happen given the right time. So what we have to do is learn patience, sabr, beautiful patience, sabr jamil, so that we will be able to receive and keep praying for Allah to open the right doors for us. But also don't forget to ask Allah to close the doors that are not good for us. Sometimes we just keep asking, open that door, you know, I want, I want, I want. When actually we also should be saying, please close the door to that want if it's not good for me, Allah. And Allah will. He will show you the way. It, subhanallah, it's it's quite an in, it's quite an incredible moment when that happens, and that's that's happened to me quite a few times. Um, so I can only talk from experience. Um, uh, another part of my practice that I've um, incorporated in my life is making dua. If you think of somebody, they come into your mind. It's very important to make du'a for them. Um, you know, we need to honour these people, they're guests of our heart, if you like. So if 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 someone pops into your mind, please make du'a for them. And also make du'a for, for everybody and anybody, if you can, really. You know, if you met somebody on the street and they touched your heart, make du'a for them. Um, I tend to have a list of du'as for, for friends, family, and I tend to go through my du'as every time, you know, at the end of my prayers, just to make sure that I cover everybody. I, I kind of make a little list. And I'm learning now. I wasn't so very good at so so um, I wasn't very good at this at the beginning. Maybe because I was still very hurt and I hadn't learned to love myself. But now I make du'a for myself as well, and I feel okay about that. Whereas before I would sort of leave myself at the end of my du'as. <laughs> but now I sort of try and put myself at the beginning. Because if I'm not in check and if I'm not strong, then how can I help anybody um, who might come to me and ask for help? 
in, in this worldly life. So it's important to keep yourself in check and to nourish yourself. And it's okay to ask and say du'a for yourself too. Um, oh, another nice one I want to say is, um, I learned manners. Islam taught me manners. I, like I've said, I was very abrupt, very, um, um, I guess I, I, I wasn't really considering, I wasn't a very good listener. I wasn't really considering those around me and I wanted to you know get my point across or my needs across before really considering perhaps uh, the other person giving the other person that little bit of space and time to have you know they might be in more of a need than I am we're all in need so I learned beautiful manners and the best of those um, um the best of manners is beautiful manners. Sorry, that's what I wanted to say. The best of manners is beautiful manners. So just to always have that kind of respect for everybody, no matter what where they're coming from, you know what what they're bringing to you. Always respond in a beautiful uh, in a beautiful way, um, and 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 just soften yourself and humble yourself. I, I had to humble, and that that taught me a lot of humility actually. Um, Another uh, ayat was the in the Quran it says um, two uh, hundred and fifty two chapter two in one hundred and fifty two verse it said um, so remember me and I will remember you much that go that goes back to zikr what I just said um, and that was just a line that I've written down and um, I just remember that and 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 and. It, it, it just helped helped me become calm and settled and at ease with this life and what I was going through. So that was just something else I wanted to pop in there, really. Um, and another good point here was um, don't change yourself. Don't change yourself for anybody. You hold on tight to your, your deen, your belief, your love for Allah. Um, but the one thing you do need to change for, the one entity is Allah. Don't change for anybody but, but Allah. So Allah is number one, always. Uh, comes first before anybody, you know, before your children, before your husband, before your family. You and Allah, because at the end of the day, who's going to be there with you when you have to cross over? Who's going to be there on Judgment Day for you? And remember, when we're crossing our bridge, on the day of judgment we're not even going to be thinking of anybody else apart from ourselves because we are on our focus on our end and that would be the light that we're we're hoping inshallah that we're going to get to and we don't see anything or anybody else around us except the light and that's where we're going so don't change anybody in this life don't change for anybody in this life only change for allah for the better change yourself for the better for allah to, to get closer to Allah, to earn Allah's love, to earn Allah's mercy and uh, everything else that Allah gives us. Um, I'm going to finish on um, a last point here. When you have sadness in your heart, which is what I did, I had a heavy, heavy sadness in my heart. Alhamdulillah, I don't have sadness in my heart anymore. It's just pure light. It's wonderful. Um, when you have sadness in your heart, it's your heart telling you to find Allah. You know, you, you, for, for, for those people who are my, my uh, YouTube listeners out there, um, if you're not is, Islam, if you're not into Islam and you've got sadness in your heart, it's for you to find Allah because through Allah, you will find that comfort and that ease. And remembering Allah is always there. He will never, ever let you down. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, these next few videos, I think I'm just going to be pondering over some material that um, I, you know, I, I spoke to you about. You know, I write things down and it's all in here. Um, I, I just write things, I used to just write things down as I was reading or listening or pondering um, and it, it just gives me great comfort 
And now I'm going back over it two and a half years later. It's like, oh yeah, for the last two and a half years, these are the points that I've been really working on without even really thinking about it. And they all make complete sense to me now. So I've got a lot and lot and lot and lot and lots and lots and lots to be grateful for. So, um, and I'm very, very grateful that you that you are on my on my channel, that you're here, that you've subscribed. Uh, please, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscription button down below and do share these videos around. Let's show the beauty of Allah. I'm living proof <laughs> that there is there is light at the end of the tunnel. Believe me, you will find your way with Allah's will, Allah's blessings. But you've got to put in the effort as well. Don't just sit there and say, oh, well, I love Allah and then don't do anything about it. It's hard work. You've got to work it out yourself. But knowing that Allah is there, that's where to, that is where to start. Take care. Have a super duper day. It's absolutely gorgeous here today. Lots of lovely sunshine. Alhamdulillah. Um, I'm so grateful for that. Have a lovely afternoon or an evening or a morning, wherever you are in the world. Much, much love. Thank you so much for staying along uh, this, uh, this video and listening to the end. So don't forget to like, subscribe. Please leave comments. Very happy to hear from you. Take care. Much love. Mwah.